I am so excited to be filming this video. This is something I have wanted to film since purchasing and moving into this home. To me, it is still new. Even though we are coming up on two years, you know, the first year really was that adjustment, renovation, settling period. And now that I'm settled, it's very clear that my plants are very happy in their new homes. So today I'm going to be doing a full house plant tour of I believe like 100 plus plants. I honestly have not counted in a while, but they keep multiplying, I keep propagating, and I keep impulsively purchasing new plants. So this is a very green abundant home and I am very excited to share with you some of my favorite plants. I'm going to link down below my plant tour from when I was in my apartment because that is the last time that I did one of these and pretty much every single plant from that tour for the most part is still here. That being said, when I posted that plant tour video three years ago, I had no idea how mean the plant community can be on YouTube. So honestly, if the comments were that bad about how I'm taking care of some of my plants, I can't even imagine what it's like for some people that share their children or even their pets online. I have cats as well, and they definitely get some of those like cat parent shaming comments, even though I'm doing my best and I would never want to do anything to harm my plants or my cats. Just remember to be kind in the comments, please. I've been a plant mom for a long time now, so I do actually know what I'm doing. If you have any constructive criticism or advice, just please be kind about it. I know I get a lot of questions about how I have cats and so many plants, and I'm honestly just very lucky to have cats that don't really mind my plants. They never mess with them or chew, and for the most part, my plants are up high on shelves or on the wall, so they're in places where my cats don't normally go. They never dig in them, they don't chew or eat the plants. Most toxic plants, besides some that I don't own obviously, are toxic if ingested to pets. However, if there were ever a situation where my cats were messing with the plants, I would of course assess the situation move the plants, get rid of it. But they have been living in harmony for years now. And if you're struggling with a cat that likes to mess with your plants, hanging planters are your best. Oh my gosh, there's turkeys in my backyard. <laughs> basically, that is all I really wanted to say in this intro. We're gonna walk around my whole house and do basically a house tour, but only highlighting the plants. I hope that you enjoy. Please subscribe, follow me on Instagram because I share plants on my stories a ton. If you wanna play a fun game, please count how many plants I own because the number is always changing. But like I said, I have no idea. So it would be really fun to figure that out with you together. But with all that being said, let's start at my front door. Follow me. Welcome to my front door. Right when you walk in, in the entryway, I've got this snake plant. Snake plants are awesome because they do well in pretty much any type of lighting. I got this clay plant pot from Target a few years ago, but it's awesome quality. That's the other thing, this, the plant community accused me of having like the wrong pots for every single plant I owned. Trust me, if you don't see a drainage hole, it's there. I've got the plastic containers usually that they're potted in, placed inside of other plant pots. So if you don't see a cup for water or think that it's planted into a drainless pot, I would never do that. I just visually like to hide it so that it looks better, but all my plants are potted correctly. I promise. Anyway, I've got the snake plant here. This area makes for like an awesome photo area. So if you want to take a quick picture of your outfit before you head out the door, like I love having a full length mirror area that works really well by the entryway. So if you are heading out, you can do like a quick double check. And then right next to the front closet, I've got this abundant pothos that is truly taking over. I genuinely don't know how to show you how big this pothos has gotten, gotten but um, I'm 5'2", and the pot is on the ground. It's up there, for sure. It's very, very happy. This I'm excited for this whole wall to kind of become covered in this pothos. It came with like a really small wooden trellis immediately placed into this home. It just took off. Plants really love this new house because of how much natural light I get everywhere. Also, for those asking, clear adhesive hooks or small nails work really well if you want to kind of guide your plant up the wall. 
I learned that trick from my boyfriend's sister, actually. I don't know, I just never thought to do it before, but it's a genius idea and it really helps plants navigate vertical directions. After the front doorway, over on the right side at this entryway table, I have a little bamboo, which actually started out as a cutting that I bought for a dollar at a plant nursery, but now it's potted and doing really well. I feel like having lucky bamboo kind of by the entryway brings good luck into your home, but also, you know, provides luck as you leave. I think it's a really nice plant to have in the entryway for that, if you believe in it, you know, the luck part. And then I've got another huge snake plant back here and another big snake plant again I love snake plants because they are just so adjustable and adaptable to their environments and I really think they make awesome fill-in plants you know if you have a space and you're not quite sure what to put somewhere adding a plant adding some life greenery it just helps a ton like if these two plants weren't here the space would definitely feel colder and not as like homey and I definitely love that cozy like lived in earthy home yet clean because i'm a very clean person to anyone just starting out with plants in their home i would definitely recommend snake plants these are called mother-in-law's tongues because well you know i really love these two snake plants they're also really fun to have outside in the summer they can kind of create like a forest gate almost against my balcony provide some privacy, provide some nice home for some little frogs for a while. I know the tree frogs love my snake plants. They're always hopping all over them in the summertime. So yeah, two snake plants back there. And then moving on to the living room. Start. there are plants everywhere okay we're gonna try to power through because this room definitely has the most plants I think I'm just gonna start with this bookshelf and then wrap around the whole room starting over here on the left I got this from Ikea highly recommend at the bottom we've got a spider plant she's super happy here a beautiful silver fritonia this is one of my favorites it's so cool I love the leaf pattern of this plant and she's super happy. She's growing a ton. That's the other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, but a lot of these plants are about to get new homes. So I'm just waiting for it to get slightly warmer outside. It's the end of April when I'm filming this. So I just want to wait like a few more days so that the frost is over. Yeah, I'm about to repot a bunch of plants that have outgrown their pots over winter. So some of these plants that you see you might think that they're in pots that are too small. Yes, they totally are. And they're getting a new pot soon. I like to do all of my potting outside and I'm just waiting for it to get slightly warmer so I can make a mess and repot some, some babies. Also, I do go through kind of like a chaotic adjustment period when I repot plants because sometimes the new pots don't fit in their old spaces or it just doesn't look the same. So some things might get shifted and moved around and I really wanted to capture this before the big repotting of the season. So yeah, a couple of these plants will be repotted and I'm aware, but thank you so much for your help. So the silver fritonia is definitely outgrowing this pot and will be repotted, but I wanted to kind of capture her in this pot before I repot. This is like probably my favorite pot that she's been in so far, but this is a very, very special um, plant to me. I got it at, I don't know, I can't really tell the story behind this plant, but it just has to do with something very personal and meaningful to me. Next, I have my Monstera, which totally took over this corner. I got this as an itty bitty baby in like 2021, I think. And then as soon as I moved and put it here, it's gone through three pots and I need to repot it again. But it's super happy here and it grows probably the quickest and biggest out of most of my plants here. And very soon she's gonna get a new pot as well. It's so funny because when I moved in, this plant looked so small here. I almost thought I couldn't put it here because it was too small to put here and now it's it's taken over. Up on the top of the shelf, I've got another Monstera, kind of known as the Swiss cheese Monstera. This one also completely took over. I'll try to find a picture of it when I bought it and had it in my apartment. Since moving, it really, really loves this home as well. I mean, it's been vining funky shapes 
all over. I try to readjust it so that the ceiling doesn't get in the way, but you know, plants are really smart and they know their environment well, so it'll work. Like it even worked around the frame, which I think is cool. It's going around the corner, it's up on the shelves, it's going down, absolutely stunning. I should repot it as well. I'm just so afraid to move it because it really likes its home. And then I also have a pothos up here as well that is vining like crazy. And this pothos is super happy too. I know it's not technically a house plant, but this framed branch right there is a cutting from a tree that my family planted at my childhood home. And I snipped that when we sold the house. So I have a piece of it with me always. It's super important to me. Moving over here, I've got this palm leaf tree, I believe is what this one is called. Whenever I water it, it kind of sounds like rain. I've got a croton down here, which I'm excited to put outside again. It definitely does best outside in full sunlight. And then I've got a donkey tail succulent here thriving. I've got a rubber tree ficus up here and a shady marlene, I believe is what this one is called. This one grew a ton over the winter, so I am definitely repotting her in a few days as well. But what's super exciting about this plant is this is the first season that it has budded and bloomed flowers. They are so fun looking, super cute. So I've had a couple of flowers bloom. This is also a plant that when I bought it, it was super, super small. So it's just so cool to see it thrive in its home. Of course, I have another snake plant back here, kind of like that filler plant. And again, I like to take this outside in the summer. Moving to the fireplace mantle, I have two pothos on both sides. They have vined like crazy to the point where it's just been wrapping and wrapping around. I had it vining up here before, but it was too close to the sunlight, so I put it back here. Anyway, they're super long and I should make cuttings out of them, but I'm also really proud of how long they've gotten. I think I might try to vine it like up around the TV. Then I have a money tree over here, which again, thriving. I love seeing all of these new little shoots come up. Definitely a very abundant tree. This is also a really fun corner though. There's so many treasures back here, a lot of life. Let's get into it. There are so many plants in this corner. There's so much life. I originally wanted to put one of those Sherpa chairs step back here with like a bookshelf full of books. But with all of this natural light and direct sunlight, as you can see, that comes in honestly all day. It's, it's like a sundial in here because in the morning, it starts out over here. I've got four huge, well, six windows. And then throughout the day, it just moves and moves and moves. And then golden hour hits the sunroom. Yeah, so the plants love it back here. But like I said, I've got this beautiful, huge money tree. Definitely brings me a lot of good luck. In the corner, I've got a small cactus. I have a zebra aloe back here as well that is kind of just on the windowsill temporarily until the frost is over and I can place them outside. All of my succulents, aloes, cacti plants live on my patio over the summertime and I house them in the winter, but I like having them outside. So that's gonna go outside. I've got a jade succulent down on the ground that is going outside and then behind me, can you even see me back here? And then behind me on the shelves and the plant stand and the ground, we have this easy plant, which has truly taken over. This used to be on my kitchen counter and now it is huge, as well as a snake plant that is getting repotted. I've got a Dracaena as well as another silver Petonia. Super happy. I mean, look at how abundant this Fetonia is. And then I love these large glass stars. They're from Target's dollar section, but they work great for propagating. So I have a Monstera cutting that needs to be potted. It's definitely overgrown. Like there are some good roots in there. So I'm excited. I like to gift these and whatnot. Up on the shelf, we have another Jade Succulent. This beautiful pot that I recently bought, it was called the Aphrodite pot. So obviously I had to purchase some hair with her. So I've got some baby turtles or baby tears, I believe. Either way, this makes for awesome plant hair in a plant pot. She's rocking a side part right now. I definitely need to rotate the pot because it's reaching for the sun. I've got this beautiful little string of hearts here. She's gotten really long, so that's why she's kind of like wrapped up right now, but she's still growing. This is my elephant cup 
pot that I got from Earthbound, but I thought it would made a better plant pot than a mug. And my elephant has awesome hair. I mean, look at this dude. This is a type of snake plant as well. Super fun. And then I have a Hoya back here. It's like a succulent knot type of plant, but I love Hoyas. This one's doing awesome. And then I know it's not really a plant, but I did wanna highlight the sculpture that my grandmother made that has always lived on her piano when I was growing up. Like there's, you can't see it in this photo, but that's me and my grandma at her piano and the sculpture lived right there. So it's a really neat way for me to honor my grandmother and have her spirit with me. And then this is also her lamp that became my mother's lamp that has always kind of been around my childhood home. Is this not me? <laughs> I really love this mushroom lamp. I really love having it right next to the sculpture because I like to believe that the little fairy is whispering her secret secrets in the garden and I feel like they're super happy with all this life. If you follow me on Instagram, you see this all the time, but I really, really love it. I feel like they bring so much life here. They've got Aphrodite back there to talk to as well. Anyway, as you can see, I have a very happy overgrowing pothos up here. She is thriving. I've got her kind of like hooked up over here. I want to get a big gold vintage mirror to put here and have like the vines start to wrap around the mirror. But this pothos is super happy. It's even vining that way as well. And then I have another glass jar for propagating up there with another monstera cutting that I need to plant as well. And then the last two plants in the living room are up here on the shelf. I have this beautiful philodendron that is totally overgrown that I've wrapped around the um, shelf. This heart-shaped philodendron I've had since my bedroom makeover video. I bought it for that video, so it's definitely super happy here. It's gotten so long. I used to just have it hanging down like this, but I've had to wrap it around this wall shelf, um, and it's still growing, so it's super happy, but I love the look of how it just kind of absorbs the, the shelving, but adds so much life to it. And then I have a little cactus from Ikea up here as well that is super happy. Those are all of the plants in my living room. Moving on to the kitchen, dining room, and the sunroom, we have a lot more. dining room. I recently did renovate and do a full makeover on my dining room. So if you like before and after room makeover renovation videos, I'm going to link it down below. Definitely check it out. You'll get all of the details on the space. Starting over here on my wine rack, these two plants have kind of always been in this spot, even in my apartment, which is nice that they like the space here as well. Got this little heart-shaped philodendron. This has really started to take off this year. It started as a really small cutting and you know it takes a while for it to get to the point where it's going to start to vine and grow, but I've noticed a lot of big growth this year with this plant, so it's super exciting. And then this Sweetheart Hoya, which is like the heart-shaped succulents, super cute. What's awesome about these plants is they technically like don't really grow. They do, and the happiest heart-shaped Sweetheart Hoyas are the ones that look the same since you bought them. So if you're looking for a plant that does cool stuff and vines and blossoms and blooms, it wouldn't be for you, but they are awesome plants and I think they're really cute and make like an awesome gift to a significant other, but treat them like a succulent, let them dry out. You definitely don't want the soil to be too wet, otherwise they won't live. But this one is really happy and it's been here um, for a long time. Now, moving over to my counter. I've got some goodies back here. We have, well, I have fresh flowers from Trader Joe's. They last a really long time too, so I highly recommend these guys. I like to always have fresh flowers in the kitchen, but I also really like to always have a little ZZ plant in the kitchen. I don't know why, but I started doing this since my apartment days. You'll see a couple of big ZZ plants that have outgrown this spot, but this is the latest little one. ZZ plants are exactly as they sound they're really easy plants so if you are a beginner plant mom or plant dad highly recommend a ZZ plant they're just spelled like Z Z they're also a type of plant that does well in low light areas which is why it's nice that I can have one in the kitchen and then behind me on the ground I do have a large 
ZZ plant that used to be on the counter, but now it is next to the side table. Speaking of moving on to the side table, we have a lot more plants to talk about. Starting with this Easter cactus, which blooms in the springtime. Here's one of the dried flowers that it bloomed. So you may have heard of a Thanksgiving cactus or a Christmas cactus or an Easter cactus. They all typically look like this, but the difference is when they bloom. So this one likes to bud and bloom in the summer, springtime, which is why it's technically an Easter cactus, but I do have a Christmas cactus in the sunroom. I'll show you in a second. I've got this fun, little succulent on my dining room table. I found this pot at an antique fair. I think it's super cute. Then of course, I've got another snake plant in this corner. Like I said, snake plants just do well anywhere. It's an awesome filler plant and I like how the reflection makes it seem like there's more life back here. But yeah, she's super happy. I'll take her outside in the summertime as well. I have some hanging pothos cuttings in this like glass water filled plant hanger up there. If you watched my dining room makeover, you saw the whole process of that. As well as my recent vlog, I showed clips of it too. It's really happy up there and I think it works really well for the space. Then on this kind of rattan wicker shelf, it's from Target. If they still have it, I will link it down below. I'll link as many things as I can down below for you, I promise. But I really love this type of wall shelf because again, the plants are able to wrap around and get really happy in their environment. All of these plants, by the way, up here started as propagations, as cuttings, you know, some of them still are. But I've got this pothos up here, which is super happy. It's vining all the way down. I have another sweetheart philodendron back here as well. Now I'm pretty sure that both this philodendron as well as that little philodendron are cuttings from that big mother philodendron up there. I have a little cutting of an aloe vera up here, which this piece accidentally fell off. So instead of throwing it away, I just threw it in some water and it's happy. I've got another pothos up here. I call this one Evie because when I propagated it for my parents' place, it was one tiny, tiny leaf. It looked like the plant in Wally, -E, which I know the plant wasn't called Evie, but this one is Evie and she looks just like this, except now, she has grown abundantly. I'm so proud of her. And then I have another satin pothos cutting. So I don't think I've showed you any satin pothos yet, but they are so beautiful. The leaves kind of remind me of velvet. I can definitely plant this one when I do the big repotting and then get another propagation going because look at how this one has taken off. This is a cutting from a plant up here. So let me grab a bar stool. I'm standing on my bar stool, but up on these shelves, I have four plants. I have the mother satin pothos up here, which again, she's vining, she's so happy. Pothos, they do well in like most lighting as long as they get a decent amount. I have a cutting of a string of bananas or a string of dolphins, whichever, I don't know, I feel like people call it by both names. I only propagated this a few weeks ago, but already she has so many awesome roots in there. So definitely a very happy cutting. And then I have a Hoya. There's something about a Hoya in a kitchen that I have envied and wanted for so long. Don't ask me why, but I love the color of these leaves and like the, the look of the clay pot against this bright green leafery. <laughs> She's really happy up here. She's definitely starting to vine down. It's gonna be really fun when these like really vine down and take over this wall. And then up here above the cabinet, I've got this pothos, which really loves this space. Like she is constantly vining. I recently had to chop her cause she was getting so long and her cuttings went over there. So she's still nearby, but then it's gonna start to vine over there. Yeah, lots of plants. I'm really happy with how my dining room recently turned out and there's just so much life and greenery back here, but that was the dining room and kitchen. Moving right along to the sunroom. This is a room I have dreamed of having since moving and was a really great blessing moving into this house. Welcome to my sunroom. The plants love it in here, so do the cats. Also, if you're new to my channel, I have makeover renovation transformation videos for every single room in this house. So if you wanna see the full renovation of the sunroom, 
like hardwood floors, paint, furniture, everything. I'm gonna link it down below. I'll link the whole playlist of my transformation renovation videos as well as the home buying process of when I bought this house and all of that, like moving in vlogs. I know those are super fun to watch. I like watching those, so I'll link that down below. But welcome to the sunroom. <laughs> Thrive. They get non-stop direct sunlight all day. I'm gonna shut it while I'm filming just because I feel like the background noise makes it harder to hear. But yeah, all the plants in here are super happy. They get direct sunlight every single day. I'm actually thinking about doing a mini makeover in here. I say soon, but probably like by the end of the year. If I'm lucky, I would like to kind of switch out this day bed for a small love seat and get some more seating. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But come on in, let me show you some plants. Starting with the obvious, we have this giant birds of paradise. Oh my word, look at the size of this recent leaf that uncurled, like that leaf compared to that leaf. I bought that plant from Ikea for $20. I think I have a photo of when I bought it. It was small and immediately upon being repotted and placed in the sunroom, it just took off. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's getting so big. Even though this is a new leaf, <laughs> there's already a new leaf that's gonna uncurl soon. It's getting way too big for its environment, um, but I don't wanna part with it. And I've got the cutest little mushroom steaks in there from a home improvement store. I have this little tiny snake plant, which these are cuttings. I've got a huge snake plant in the corner there. This one was one of my first plants from my apartment days. It does hold a very dear place in my heart. That is totally Marnie's spot. I have a wandering dude plant in the back. Also, this is the space where I house all of the plants that go outside in the summer. They just kind of get placed there for the winter. So it's still pretty full in here, but very soon everything will be outside again. These are all the plants that go outside. We've got a cactus, tiger tooth aloe, two big aloes. These are my herbs so far. They're gonna be potted in the big plant boxes outside. I have another aloe, another tiger tooth aloe, cactus, galore. All of these plants are going outside, so I won't even really get into them, but you can see it's like a ton of aloe and cacti. So very soon, none of this will be in the sunroom. Like even the table is going outside, but these are all the outdoor plants. Won't really get into them, except for the fact that these aloes are like completely overgrown. I will repot those. I've got the soil and the box outside, so I'm going to do that probably today now that it's it's in the 60s, so warm enough for me. Over here, I've got this huge, beautiful Thanksgiving slash Christmas cactus. This is super important to me because this started out as a cutting for my aunt from my grandmother who passed one of her big plants. And I remember this mother plant in my grandmother's home. So it's really special that I have a cutting of this plant that has outlived her, honestly, um, which is terrifying to think of. Like, are my plants gonna outlive me? It's a way for me to honor my grandmother and have her with me in this space. I feel like her energy is with me. She's alive with me in the form of one of her plants. I don't know, I know that's like spiritual. I, that might be too spiritual to some people, but this was my grandmother's plant, so it's like, really cool that I get to have it now. Um, I have a little succulent like bowl here of different succulents which goes outside. This really cool zebra aloe will go outside as well. I need to repot it. I know succulents and aloes like a tightly bound pot but it's time. I've got a cactus. Look at the size of that second shoot on this cactus. It's like bigger than the thing itself. Another zebra aloe back here really taking off. Over here I've got a little cactus Practice. And then this is actually a cutting from the cutting from my grandmother's plant. It accidentally snapped off, so I quickly propagated it to save it, and now it's in this cup, and now I have two. Back here, I've got a m abundant Chinese money plant. This was a housewarming gift the day that I got the keys to this home, and it came in a tiny, tiny pot with this 
oh the places you will grow as like a congratulations on the new home gift and it has definitely grown again this is one of those plants that means a lot to me because of the story and the person that gave it to me and all of that I need to repot this one again as well it's gone through like three different pots at least since I got the gift and you can see that it is overgrowing the one that it's currently in up here I've got string of dolphins or string of bananas I've heard both these are actually cuttings so it's in a glass vase with water and again I recently did this but already there are so many roots in there I feel like it's doing better in water than when I had it in soil but I can pot these soon I'll probably gift them but I really like having the look of a hanging plant here and then I've got a couple propagation projects on these shelves as well these propagations are from that plant over here as well as this plant but I've got a propagating jar here as well as another cactus from Ikea up here you can see it vining down but I have another propagation from that plant another propagation and then some more string of donkey tails I think is what the succulent is called up here oh I think we did it but that was the sunroom those are all of the plants that I have on the main floor but we are not done yet heading upstairs let's continue the tour now i don't have as many plants upstairs but i definitely do have a handful you wouldn't believe how long it takes me to water all my plants welcome to my upstairs hallway let me show you a little bit around my upstairs so my bedroom is right behind you we've got the wellness room in here again all of these rooms have full makeovers or even my empty house tour if you want to check that out but coming down this hallway at the end on my right we've got my home office space i am a full-time content creator on youtube so i work from home this is my job among so many other social media things but everything comes from home so i do use this office all the time it is a little messy in here but i only have two plants in here at the moment to show you i've got a succulent over here which gets a ton of awesome light and then next to my lucky pyrite i have a little aloe as well which is going to get a new pot because it is definitely super snug in there but they're both really happy this is my backyard <laughs> yeah i get a lot of afternoon light in here so i really should put more plants in here this is a space that i can definitely put more plants in but coming down the hallway next we have my wellness room and i spend a lot of time in here as well practicing yoga and meditation and just having a room for myself even though i do live alone spiritually it's different in here welcome to my wellness room this is where I like to practice yoga, I like to paint, meditate, I've got this new fountain going if you can hear that, which I mentioned in my most recent vlog. I do have a couple of plants in here, I honestly need to get some more, but this is what we have so far. I only have this one window in here, but it does receive a lot of indirect light. This marble pothos is really happy here. I mean, it's flowing all the way down to the ground. I've had this since my apartment. If you have a really good memory, it was like above my couch, but since placing it in here, it's been growing a ton, super happy. And then I have two monsteras down here. These were both in those glass containers in the living room when they started out as propagations, cuttings, but they have graduated to pots and they're pretty happy here. I don't think they'll be here forever, but for now. I also have this little philodendron just hanging on for dear life. It wasn't doing so well in its own home, so I isolated it, repotted it. Hi, Luna. <laughs> so hopefully it's gonna be doing better. And this door is usually shut just because I do have the fountain and some more vulnerable new plants on the ground. But like I said, they're really well behaved. She doesn't even notice them. She won't bother the plants at all. But yeah, I wanna have more plants on this shelf as well. I do have a Brazil philodendron. Look at how fun this leaf is. And this one is really happy up here. I mean, philodendrons are fairly easy. They like shady spots for sure. Look at all this growth, happy girl. And then I mentioned 
the pothos here as well. So I guess I really just have five plants in here, but that's enough because although I do spend time in this room, I'm only in here a couple hours during the day, so I don't want it to be too isolating. Okay, I need to give you some pets. <sighs> So I don't want the space to be like too isolating for them, but obviously a wellness room would be really great to have more plants in here. What, do you need attention? You're so sweet. You so happy because we're in the wellness room and you're never allowed in here? <laughs> yeah, they can be quite disruptive when I am trying to practice yoga and it's just honestly unsafe if I'm doing yoga and they're walking around. I love it in here, but we have to continue the tour. And do you wanna show them? The last room that we need to show is my bedroom. Welcome to my bedroom. Luna and I are going to show you around. I feel like I don't have as many plants as I want in my bedroom, and this is one of the last rooms that I have to fully redo since moving. If you've been on my channel for a while, I basically just took everything from my bedroom makeover in 2020 from my apartment, placed it here, but now that we're in a new space, not everything works, and I have some bigger ideas for this bedroom to kind of turn it into more of an earthy cottage core. Space that kind of just fits more of my interests right now, but a bedroom makeover needs to happen by the end of the year. Hopefully, I mean, if it's in budget, I don't want to make it like extreme. I just want to like modify it a bit so that we can have more plants on the spare wall and on the dresser. But for now, here are the plants in my bedroom. Speaking of my dresser, let's start here. So I have a prayer plant. It's a calathea, and I love this thing so much. When I first got it, it was very picky, and we went through kind of like a learning process of figuring out what it likes, but these plants can be a bit trickier. They just like a lot of water. Not too much, but just right. They're called a prayer plant, though, because at night, when there's no sunlight, all the leaves will move upward and it looks like it's praying. I've always had this in my bedroom. I consider it like a very calming plant. Also, I just love the spots on it. It's so beautiful. This has been alive and thriving since the pandemic started. So three years in, super happy here. I love my prayer plant so much. I've got a pothos in this bottom part of this hanging planter. I'll link this if I can still find it. It's from Amazon. I got it for the room makeover. She is so happy here, like vining all the way down, all the way around. I have her kind of wrapped up here as well. So she's really taking over her new space. She loves it. This is the Monstera that I got for the bedroom makeover. It desperately needs to be repotted. I just haven't found a big enough pot that isn't like 300 bucks, but I need to. I've been taking a lot of cuttings from this plant as well. So now that those two glass jars downstairs will be available soon, I can make more propagations. But yeah, I know she's overgrown. She's getting a new pot or basket soon, but I love this plant for the bedroom. I got this little bamboo plant stand and storage thing off of Amazon when I moved. I really love it. It's awesome. It's like the perfect height for underneath a window. But on here, I've got another Swiss cheese Monstera. This might be a cutting from the big guy. I'm pretty sure that was a cutting from it. A little Dracaena and then a bamboo plant, which my little brother actually made me a clay panda bear with its own bamboo stick. So I put it in this bamboo. Got a lot of new growth up here. And this is super exciting. So this was a cutting as well from one of my Monsteras and we are in the process of a new leaf. I also just rotated her because she was up against the window. Speaking of the window, I also have this beautiful string of turtles. I mean, look at how thick she has gotten that's hanging here and she's gotten super long really happy as you can clearly see this window gets a ton of light in here and then i also have a beautiful golden hour that kind of hits this back wall i mean it looks really bare as you can tell i haven't like done this room yet but i want to add more stuff here I don't think there's enough light back here to put plants there, but I need to like redo this area, get some shelves, get some more plants. That is definitely coming in the future. So subscribe so you don't miss that. But I think we got every single plant in this house. That is the full house plant tour. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you like tours like this or collections, 
I do have a full crystal collection house tour video where I go through each room and share all of my crystals. I'll link that down below. If you wanna see a full empty house tour, I don't have a fully furnished finished house tour up yet, but I do have an empty house tour from the day that I got the keys two summers ago. That was before renovations. It looked completely different, like probably unrecognizable, but it's really fun to look back and kind of see how much has changed. So if you want the empty house tour, I'll link it down below. Once I finish the bedroom, I want to do a fully done like house tour, house tour. But yeah, like I said, my plants are kind of always shifting and I'm going to be repotting a ton of them. So I'll move some around. I'll get some more plants. I propagate so it is always changing. Oh my gosh, I see a butterfly. I love springtime. It is always changing, but for right now, this is what it looks like. I usually vlog a couple times a month too, so if I do shift things around, it'll be in the vlog. It's always fun to look back. I mean, like if you watch my plant tour from my apartment, I probably have less plants than I do now. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed. Please follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you with my next video soon. I think I'm gonna go pot some plants. Mm -hmm.